Good morning. It's good to see you guys today. You guys ready to worship? God is worthy of our praise, isn't he? Go ahead and stand. song I'm pretty excited for. It's called Graves in the Gardens. And uh, I'm just amazed at the transformation power that Jesus has in our lives if we let him. And you know, the, there's, in Psalms 30, 11, it says, you have turned my mourning into dancing. You know, one of the things we have to remember, especially in the day we live in, is that this is not our home. Amen? Amen. Aren't you glad for that? Aren't you glad that this is not our home? I don't know what the pandemic's going to do. I don't, there may be another one next year, but this is not my home. I don't know how the political climate of our country is going to work out, but this is not my home. Amen? Amen? Let's keep that in perspective. Let's worship him this morning.
Welcome, everybody. Welcome, Grace Church. Welcome to those watching online. We're really happy to have you with us and to get into God's Word together with you. Um, we're welcoming the kids this morning. It's, this is Family Sunday, so the kids are joining us. There are journals out on the coffee barn if you didn't pick one up and if you'd like one. Uh, feel free to help yourself. Lots of stuff going on as we get into the fall couple of things. We're going to have worship, prayer, and communion on Wednesday at 6.30. We would love for you to join us. We also are launching the growth track, relaunching it, I should say, today after service. So meet out in the lobby by the banner that says growth track, and somebody will assist you. And that's just a way to learn more about what we do here at Grace Church so we can learn more about you. It's just a way to connect, and we have lunch for you and free resources. You don't have to sign up. Just show up, so we would love for you to do that. And then we're going to be launching our fall semester of Grace Groups the week of September 13th, which is coming up really fast. We're already on September 6th. So if you have not, uh, if, you, if you didn't attend the recruitment event with, that we had last Sunday, there's still time to sign up. And what you'll do is just fill out one of the information surveys on the Welcome Shack after service. We would love for you to do that. If you need to register to vote, we've got that covered too. This Sunday and next Sunday, we have voter registration out in the lobby. So there's plenty of stuff going on. Find somebody with a red tag, our red name badge, and they can help you if you need more information about any of that. 
Did I cover everything? I don't know how you remembered all I that. I don't know either. I didn't have it written amazing. down even. All right. How's everybody? Good to see you on Labor Day weekend. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad somebody's here. That's great. <laughs> well, I uh, want to welcome you guys online. If you're watching and uh, just want to keep... Uh, Terry Linhoff in our prayers. He had an infection from a cat incident. Don't say it, Dave. I won't. Dogs are better. <laughs> couldn't he couldn't resist. <laughs> All right. All the cat lovers are going to throw things at you. Wasn't it wonderful to come in to worship this morning? And yes. That new song was amazing. What's, it, what's the title of it? Graves into Gardens. Graves into Gardens. That's awesome. It was awesome. Anybody remember the story of Samuel and Eli, the high priest Eli and Samuel? Uh, Samuel was a little boy. You can look at it uh, in First Samuel. I'm not going to go there right now, but I'm just going to tell you the story real quickly because it has something to do with what we're, where we're headed with this today. Anybody ever have some challenges finding God's direction in your life <laughs> or every day? You know, you're just trying to understand what it is that God wants you to do or be or go or all of that. And Samuel is one. He was just a boy and he hears, hears the voice of God in the nighttime. And uh, I think that's significant that he heard it in the night. Sometimes in our darkest days, we hear the voice of God because he comes to us in our in our pain and our difficulties. And, uh, well, Samuel was just a small boy, and he was working at the temple under the high priest Eli. And in the middle of the night, he hears these words, Samuel. And so he goes running to Eli as a servant that he was. Uh, and he said, I've come here, Master. And Eli w wipes the sleep out of his eyes. He said, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. And so he goes back to bed. This happens again. And he goes back to Eli and says, you, you called, master. And he said, no, just go back to bed. So went back to bed. The third time he hears Samuel and he runs back to Eli and Eli finally gets a clue that, hey, he might be hearing a voice from God. This is kind of spiritual work that we do, right? <laughs> In the temple. And right. so uh, he says, hey, listen, that might be the voice of the Lord speaking to you. So go back to your bed. Go to sleep. If he hollers at you again, this is my translation. Hollers right? at you? If he hollers at you <laughs> one more time, then I just want you to say, Lord, here I am. I'm available. What do you want me to do? And so he hears Samuel, Samuel. And it, the scripture is really, really precise there and specific says that the Lord was actually physically standing there. He was standing there. So Jesus was standing, or pre-incarnate, Jesus was standing there at Samuel's bed. Samuel, Samuel, he wakes up, and then the Lord spoke to him. And he began to understand what God was saying at that point. It said before that time, the Lord hadn't been revealed to him, but at that night, the Lord was revealed to him. And so, I think what he said was really significant. Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. Yeah. And I think sometimes that's a prayer we need to pray to God. You know, we're like, God, I need to hear your voice. God, I need to hear your voice. Say, Lord, speak, I'm listening. Yeah, would you be willing to do anything that God tells you to do if he were to speak to you? And usually it's small steps that he tests our, our uh, resolve to obey him and Sometimes it's kind of inconvenient when he tells us to do things. But God is trying to guide us. And I, I want us to gather that first from this story is that God is trying to speak to us. Uh, sometimes it's hard to recognize that. Uh, but that's what today is about. It's helping other people understand how we're going to kind of step in Eli's shoes. You're going to help somebody else understand how to listen to God's voice. So how can I help someone to follow God? 
How do most people find guidance for their lives? Well, we ask people with more experience than us. Mm -hmm. We observe how other people find their way in a similar situation that we're finding ourselves in. And then some people just guess. And whatever happens, happens, or even worse than that, whatever happens is God's will. Well, not necessarily, but some people have that framework that they work with. And then some people simply think about their decisions and make their best decisions and learn from trial and error. And then some people pray about it and pray and ask God for guidance. Some people in your life are asking for guidance. What are you going to tell them? How are you going to help them find God's guidance? You might give some suggestions from your own experience. You might encourage them to consult someone who's gone through some of the things that they're going through. You might even teach them to pray for guidance. Let's say that God was to answer that prayer for guidance and he begins to speak to them. How will you tell them to recognize God's voice? When you find yourself encouraging people to follow God, here are a couple things that you might do, and we're going to get into the first one, probably not the, the latter ones, but the first thing is to ask people, and you'll see what this, how this relates to what we're talking about. What's the difference between your spirit and your soul and your body? You need to locate where they are looking for guidance. And then teach them how to search their inner person, their spirit for God's communications. And then three, help them practice recognizing and observing the inner witness, the inner voice of their spirit, their human spirit, and the inner voice of the Holy Spirit. And those are all different leadings and directions. So let's talk about this first one. Ask people, kind of locate where they're finding direction, where they're looking for guidance. Ask people, what's the difference between their spirit, soul, and their body? A few weeks ago, Tori shared uh, some critical insight into the difference between the human spirit and the soul, and then also the body. We usually don't have much difficulty understanding the difference between our body and our inner man, but when it gets into the inner man, or the inner person, we kind of get lost in there. It's like, I'm not sure what's in there. Um, so we're going to pick up that thread again, add a little bit more detail. Most people, when they answer the question, what's the difference between your spirit and your soul? Most people say, well, I thought they were, they were the same. Spirit, soul, and a lot of pastors even teach it, use those words interchangeably. But there's a difference between your spirit and your soul. And it has a lot of, it makes a big difference in listening to God when you understand the difference. And we'll show you why here in just a minute. But can I show that there is a difference in the scripture between your spirit and your soul, your human spirit and your human soul? Yes. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. You want to read that, Don? It says, The word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double edged sword. It cuts all the way through to where the soul and the spirit meet to where joints and marrow come together, it judges the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Okay, so let's look at this, we'll kind of drill down a little bit on this passage. Any double-edged sword cuts it all the way through where soul and spirit meet. So if there's a place where soul and spirit meet, then they are not the same. You see, there's a distinction. And only the Word of God can really cut down deep and show you the difference between your human spirit and your human soul. And I think it's interesting and noteworthy that it says it compares where joints and marrow, marrow could be bones, joints and bones come together. So it's comparing spirit and soul and joints and marrow. And we know this from a little bit more study of other passages, which we don't have time to go into today, but the soul is kind of like an elbow. And an elbow will, will connect your forearm with your upper arm. Your knee would connect your, what's that called? Thigh. I thought there would be a more technical name from a doctor, but from your, from your thigh, from your calf, and that your knee connects the two. 
And we know from other scriptures that your soul connects, is a connector. It registers, it connects your deeper part with your physical being. All right? So, and then thoughts and intentions. Thoughts come from your soul, your mind, your intellect, your emotions, your volition, all part of your soul, the thoughts and intentions. Intentions are deeper, part of your spirit person. So the soul is in between. So if you have intentions coming from your deep, deeper part, have you ever had intentions that you never followed through with? Or the opposite, you had some intention, you're not sure where that came from, but you just followed through and it produced good things in your life or somebody else's life? Well, those intentions are deeper, but they, can't, they have to be acted out. They, they have to register in your faculties up here in your soul. So they're different. Go ahead. Can I jump in? So I, I was thinking about what if some personality, some mind, some emotions came inside of you that were separate from you, but they were inside of you. Like what if Dave's mind, emotions, will came inside of me, what would happen? Alien. Alien, yeah. So what would happen would be, number one, that the more that I yielded to those, the more I would be more like him, and I would be like a combination of the both of us. There is actually another personality for Christians who lives inside of you, who has thoughts, who has emotions, who has a will, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. And he's trying to morph <laughs> in your personality and to get you to yield more and more to him, to his thoughts, to his emotions, to his will, so that you become more like him. You're still yourself, but you're... you're intricately woven together and you're becoming a better you because of his influence in your life. So it's very real. When we talk about Christ living in us, it's very real. There's a being on the inside of those who have accepted Christ who has a mind, who has a will, who has emotions, who wants to influence you. And so it's up to us to yield to that and to decide, I'm not going to just live as this single entity anymore, but I'm going to start yielding to these other thoughts that are in the inside of me. I'm going to yield to these other emotions that are within me. Does God have emotions? Oh, yeah. Compassion is one of the big ones. I'm going to yield to these other, this other will. We have a separate will from God. Do you know Jesus in the garden gave up his will? He said, not my will, but your will be done. That meant Jesus' will and the Father's will were different at that point. But he submitted himself to God's will. So that's the same process that we're on. That's really good. Well yeah, we didn't even plan on that, did we? That was well, awesome. I, I planned I, on You it. know, a story. Uh, oh, you did? <laughs> um, last week, well, uh, let me back up a little bit. Uh, uh, a couple years ago, I was with a, a friend of mine. And he used to be, maybe I shouldn't say this, but he used to be in the, in the ministry and pastor, and now he's not. But we're good friends, and we were going to another place to visit some people, and, and he, get, he, he was roaring down the highway, and he gets pulled over. And as soon as the lights come up behind me, all of a sudden I hear effing this and effing that and, and every four-letter word, and I'm like, in the passenger seat, coming pretty quickly down the highway, trying to get home, get those sea ticks off me. Woo, woo, woo. It's like, I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit on the inside. <laughs> and I remembered my friend. And I was like, this isn't so easy, is it? <laughs> but I'm thinking, you know, I got to listen to that voice. And that voice on the inside said, just chill. 
just relax. It's just a ticket. It's just a ticket. So the officer came up to my window, and I said, hi. <laughs> he said, you're going awful fast. I said, yeah. Any excuses? No. While I'm being eaten alive. <laughs> he went back. Hey, I'll get you out of here in just a second. He went back to his vehicle and came back. And he didn't give me a ticket. It's like, listen to the voice of God more. <laughs> listen to the voice of God more. I could have tried to make all kinds of mistakes. I think when we, when we get into this, we don't have any trouble seeing what our physical body is. We move through space with our physical body. We express ourselves through our voice. And, but how many of you ever talk to yourself? <laughs> we all do. So that's on the inside of us. And that's our, so the, the Bible makes it clear that there's an outward man and an inward man. So the outward man is what we understand, our physical body. We put clothes on it. We dress it up. We do all kinds of things with it. We move it through space. We, we try to put more muscle on or less weight or whatever you do with your physical body, you eat with it, you talk with it. And then on the inside, there's also an inward person that sometimes gets neglected because we don't give it enough attention. Because we see our physical body, we don't really give the attention to our inward person. Um, here's the direction that God speaks, where he speaks to us. So you ask somebody that you're trying to help, what's the difference between spirit, soul, and body? If you can get them to locate where direction comes from, it usually does not come in the physical. It can. God can speak in the physical, vocally, audibly. But most of the time, He's going to be speaking inside you. Amen. So the direction is going to come inside you. Yes. On the inside. Do you want to fix that? <laughs> John, I don't know what that is. We'll fix it later. Just turn the thing off. Do we, how do you turn it off? I don't know. Oh, okay. All right. Go ahead. It's Labor Day weekend. We can <laughs> just go with it. So this is going to be a little bit more teaching today. And, yeah. Um, but you know what? Listening to the Holy Spirit can save your life. It really can. Um, and sometimes we get aggravated at God because there's promises in his word. We don't always see those promises come to pass. And we get aggravated at God about that. But part of the promise, part of that is that we have to listen to God. We have to be at the right place at the right time that the Holy Spirit is telling us to be, or we can get ourselves in a mess. I heard, I heard a pastor tell a story, and he used to work for a ministry where he would answer calls and pray with people. And a lady called in, and she was so aggravated. She was so upset. She had been mugged. But that's not what upset her the most. Her purse was stolen. She was okay. But what upset her the most was she said, I quoted Psalm 91 that morning. I quote that every morning. And I got mugged. What happened? Why didn't God's promises work for me? And this guy, he was kind of new in the ministry, and he was like looking on the inside for an answer. And he felt like he should ask her, well, did you feel any sort of like stop or check before you went wherever you were going that day. And she said, yeah, I did. I felt like um, it maybe and was, was unsafe God. and I shouldn't go there, but I quoted Psalm 91. <laughs> so we can't override what we're talking about today. The voice of our spirit, our human spirit, with the Holy Spirit giving us input. We, if we override that, the promises of God aren't necessarily going to work. And we have to put those all together. It is all like a package deal. So this is a really important topic. Look in your phone or your hard copy. Your texts are on the screen to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 4. Now within, so we know what our physical body is, but what's, what's going on inside of us? What is that composed of? Well, 1 Peter had... Uh, an understanding of this. He said, but 
Be adorned in the secret person of the heart. Be adorned in the secret person of the heart. So your heart would be your spirit and your soul, your entire, complete inner person. But there is a deeper part of you, a deeper part of your heart, which is what? Anybody get it? A humble and quiet what? Spirit. Spirit. So spirit is the real you. You're not a body. Thank God, because when we lay this body down, you still exist. You still live. And you're not a soul. You're not just a mind or an emotion. You think through those and you emote through those. You make decisions with your will, part of your soul. But you know what you really are? You're creating God's image and God is a spirit. So you are a spirit. Just like God is a spirit. And so he will communicate from him a, a spirit. He communicates to you a spirit. So down deep are intentions and voice, the voice of God. And a lot of times it's called the inner witness. That's that green, fuzzy feeling type of leading that's way down deep and you, your mind has trouble with it because it's deeper than your mind. But inside, in your spirit, are leadings and directions that come from heaven. And the only way to get in touch with those is to spend our time, more time, listening and making sure that what your directions are. It can help you prosper in your business. It can help you because God is for you in every area. It can help heal your body because we all have hang-ups and he can help you get over those hang-ups so that healing can flow in your body. It can help you with relationships because you won't say things that you would normally say because someone's just scratching you on the inside saying, don't say that. Don't say that. Who is that? Because you know you want to say it, right? And you know if you do go ahead and say it, you're going to put into action in this physical world, in this real relationship, you're going to put in a dynamic that you don't want. And so the Holy Spirit is in there talking to your, holy, to your human spirit saying, say this, be humble. Or sometimes he just says, don't, like he said to me when I got pulled over, don't say anything. Mm -hmm. Just don't say anything. Can I add about listening? We listen. And then also, I'm going to explain it this way. Long, long, long time ago, before there was email, before there was texting, before there were even landlines. Do you, do you all know what landlines are? Okay. Before that. People wrote letters and put them in the mailbox with a stamp. And this is how you communicated with people a long time ago. And let's say that you wanted to develop a relationship with somebody. You couldn't pick up the phone and call them. You wrote them a letter, and they wrote you a letter back, and you would do that. How, how did you get to know this person through what they wrote to you? God has given us his word so that when we become familiar with the letters and the words that he has written to us, we get to know what he's like. So when we have different thoughts in our mind, we're like, I think that might be God. That really lines up with the way he talks in his word or the things that he does in his word. This is kind of resonating because I'm in his word. And so it sounds familiar. And by the way, that's why the Bible doesn't always make sense. It sounds kind of crazy sometimes because somebody supernatural inspired it, not a human being. If it all made sense to us, I would be doubtful that it was the word of God because God says his thoughts are higher than our thoughts, as high as the heavens are above the earth. That's a long way. So it takes our minds being renewed by these letters, this communication from God, 
and the listening that Dave was talking about so that we're sensitizing our heart to the voice of God. We're like, wait, that sounds like somebody I know. That sounds like Jesus. Sounds like a letter that I read. Yeah, exactly. Look at this passage in Proverbs 20, verse 27. Now it'll make better sense if you look at this. Proverbs 20, verse 27. The spirit of man or woman or the spirit of a person. Notice he didn't say the soul. He said the spirit. The spirit of a person is the candle of the Lord. The candle, what does a candle do? It brings light, illumination. Another translation says a person's spirit is the lamp of the Lord. It searches throughout one's innermost being. So a lamp gives light. That means that God will give us insight and enlighten and direct us primarily through our deepest part of us, our spirit. Now, if we can get in touch with that and be able to recognize the communications that are coming from heaven in our deepest part of us, then we'll find God's ways and directions. And this is, us is not really the usual way people that make, make decisions. Right. It's not the most natural way because we yeah. want either something to line up physically in this realm where there's an enemy spirit that can really manipulate things. And so you think, well, if things line up this way, then I'll take that job. And then there's a manipulation of things in this natural world. And you take that job because it looked like the best thing to do. And it was not what God wanted you to do. Because there's a deeper leading on the inside. Um, and where we can really get messed up is when our emotions get involved with something. Something looks really good to our emotional self. Then it makes it much harder to get to that deeper place. Um, of, and you have to recognize that. You have to recognize your soul is talking to you and be very, very careful before proceeding forward. Right. That could be like in a, getting in a relationship and your emotions are like, oh, they're wonderful and I want to get with them and be with them, you know, and you're ignoring the Holy Spirit who is speaking in a deeper way, who's trying to protect you. Do not override that. Do not override that inner witness. Dave said it, it kind of feels like a green light, a velvety feeling. Another way to think about it is the peace of God. Now, your mind might go, be going crazy, so that's not where the peace is. It's, it's deeper down, the peace of God. There's a, can we skip down to Colossians 3.15? And Paul said the peace that Christ gives is to guide you in the decisions you make. It doesn't get much clearer than that, does it? The peace that Christ gives you is to guide you in the decisions that you make. Again, it's not going to be peace in your head. It's going to be a deeper place. And you, and you can ask God to help you to locate that. Um, our, we were on a Zoom call with our missionary friends in Beirut, um, Matt and Julie Hadabot. They were here in, Fe uh, he was here in February talking to us before COVID and all that stuff. Well, as you know, about a month ago, there was that bombing in Beirut. They usually are home in the States in the summertime. But this year, these were his words, we could not get settled on leaving. See, it's, it's what they always do. Their families are expecting them, right? You have these pressures. So, so pay close attention to the, the, the way that w that was worded. Yeah. We just couldn't get settled. settled. Well, that's, on that's, the inside. that's speaking of the inside. There's yeah. something in there. I'm just not it's, sure There's what not it a is, peace. You know? yeah. This peace that causes us to guide us to make the right decisions. So... I don't even know. They might have had their airline tickets purchased. I have no idea. I can't remember what he said. So they stayed. And when God, when you follow that peace, it will not make sense to your mind, and it, your mind will argue with you. Why didn't you go? I don't understand why you didn't go. And people will ask you, and you will have no good answer for them, except I don't feel good about it. 
That's all you can say. But you, but you got, you but you got to listen to that. So, so then when the bomb hit, they lived seven tenths of a mile from the bomb site. He was in the room where he was when the bomb hit. It was a miracle, guys. Nothing was touched. They had a little. Everything else around them was obliterated. They had a little bit of soot from the chimney fall down. Nothing. Nobody in their church was hurt. Nobody in the extended families of their church members was hurt. It was a miracle. But they said, we needed to be here when that happened for our people. I mean, that's their home. That's the people they love. He said, it would have been so hard to try and navigate this from the U.S. And we might not have been able to get back into the country because the airport was shut down. So important to figure out what is, what is God, where is God speaking to me from? It's deeper than your mind. And decide, I'm going to follow that. No matter how mm -hmm. crazy it looks, I'm going to follow that, that peace. Or if there's no peace, I'm not going to move forward. So r just a quick review. Remember what Samuel did. God was always trying to speak. He was always trying to speak to Samuel. He's always speaking to us. And the second thing is, from the instruction that came from Eli, the high priest, make yourself available. Make yourself available. Commit to do what he tells you to do. Here's another passage in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body, you see it, all three, spirit, soul, and body, be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what does it mean completely? Many of you feel that if I were to ask you, did Jesus, when you asked him to be in your life and you submitted to him, asked him to be your Lord, did he change you? Most of you would say, yeah, absolutely. Did he change you completely? And most of you say, yeah, completely. Because I, I just got regenerated on the inside. I'm not the same person I was before because the life of God came in me. You, you all have your, your language for that to describe what Jesus did when he came in, when the power of the Holy Spirit came in. He... he took over, he became your Lord, all those things, but you know that inside you were changed. But where was that change taking place? Was it in your body? No. If you were ugly before, you were ugly afterwards. No change there, right? If you were skinny before, you were skinny afterwards. No change there. What about your soul? Was your mind changed? A little bit, but was it completely changed? No, because you still wrestled with some patterns of thinking. Because in the process of time, your soul gets renewed. So what changed? Spirit, soul, and body. What changed? Your spirit changed. Because that's where the life of God comes, into your human spirit. So you don't, you're, you're not a body, you live in a body. You're not a soul, you think through a soul, you emotions through your soul, you make decisions through your soul, you're, but you're not a soul, you're a spirit. You're a spirit, and God communicates to you as a spirit. And you can hear God's voice, you can hear God's direction. He created you to be able to do that. Can I yeah, do Proverbs ahead. 3 and then we'll finish? Yep. Okay, let's look at, this is a really important scripture to help us. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Let's read it together. Ready? Trust in the Lord with all, all your, your heart, heart and do, do not, not lean on, on your, your own understanding. understanding. In all, all your ways, ways acknowledge, acknowledge him, him, and he, he will, will make, make your path, path straight. straight. Like, this is so crucial because 
What we're trying to do very often is trust with our own understanding, trust our own selves. That is our default position. But God wants us to trust in him with all of our inner being, with everything that's in us, the emotions, the reflection, our desires, our appetites, our memories. God wants us to trust everything that's in us, in our inner man, to him, to lean on and rely on him. And that is not our normal state of affairs as a human being. We tend to rely on our own selves, our own understanding, the way I've got it figured out, and we will block the voice of God if we try and do that. We will block his direction to us. So we don't want to lean on our own understanding because it's so faulty. It's so incomplete. God has such a much better way. And I'm not saying you shouldn't get all the information that you need to get, all of the data that you need to get to make your decisions. Those are wonderful. But then you don't lean on so those. So you do use your understanding yes. to a certain point, but you don't. Yeah. So if I was going to lean on Dave. No, don't do, no, don't hold. do that. Yeah. And then. I, I know. So I'm leaning. I'm just like, got all my weight on him. And if he moves. Yeah, that's what happens when we lean on our own understanding because we do not have all the information we need to make the right decisions. Only God does. And so he wants us instead, and here's the big key, in all of the ways that we go in our lives, to work, to school, in our families, in our homes, we are going to acknowledge him that word is in the Hebrew, yade. It's the word know. It means to know intimately. Do you know what? God wants to live life with you. He doesn't want to just meet with you here in church or when you have your devotions. He wants the whole of your life to be you in connection with him, seeking his wisdom, just talking to him through the day. So going into a meeting, I've been trying to do this at work. Before I go into a meeting, Lord, just help me be a blessing in this meeting. Help us to have wisdom in this meeting. And I'm at the university. And it helps. It helps a ton. Lord, help me as I go to school. Help me in my classroom. Help me with my teachers. Lord, what wisdom do you have? Just all the time just checking in with him. If we do that and acknowledge him, know him in all of our ways, he will make our paths straight which is he makes it easy. He gives us grace. That's what I see in this verse. His grace is upon our lives to work out these thorny problems, to get us to the right place, to get us to the right people. In everything that we do, he wants to be involved. And this verse is so important that I think it's something that we can memorize and then put it into practice because this is how God wants to lead us. Really, the only alternative is try to figure it all out yourself. Yeah. And we've all done that before. And the fruit is just we get, we get really tired, we get frustrated. And then we, we get, get stressed. Bitter. We get stressed. We get stressed. Yeah. And then we, if, if we're not careful, we get bitter. And that's not God's plan. He wants to help us in every situation. So let's just stand and we're going to, well, if you let me pray for you. Just how many of you are going through some decision making right now and you just feel like, yeah, you know, I need God's direction. Okay, there's quite a few of us. So we'll agree together right now. Would you pray and then I'll, I'll pray and we'll go from there. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you want to make your direction known. That's your desire, Holy Spirit. You want so much to put us on a path of blessing. Not always that we don't have problems, but that you're there working actively in our lives to work those things out and to bring us where you want us to be, to bring us to our destinies. So Lord, I pray for all those who raised their hands or those who needed to, those who are listening Online, Father, we pray together and believe together, Father, for your direction to be so made known to them, for them to recognize the leading of the Holy Spirit within them, 
for them to be able to quiet their minds and their own reasoning and not lean on their own understanding, to put that aside and to trust you instead, Lord. You have a way. You have a way. All these impossible things, you have a way. Nothing is too hard for you. It looks so big to us, but you have a way, God, and we just acknowledge that. Lord, let us acknowledge you in all of these situations that seem so difficult and say in our hearts, Lord, you have the way. I acknowledge that. I want to follow you, Lord. I want to follow you to that victory that you have for me, for my family, the future that you have for me, God. In Jesus' name. If you would, with your eyes closed, your head bowed, or whatever you want to do, you can look around if you want, but just... If you'll take this care that you have, this direction that you need, would you put it in one hand and just offer it up to God as a, just like a symbolic gesture that God, I'm giving this to you now and I know it's in your hands. I give it to you now. And I just thank you for talking to me about this and I'm available speak to me and help me recognize what you're saying to me and help me recognize the ways that you're leading me and that still quiet small voice on the inside Lord let that be evident to every one of us today can we just take a moment while Cindy plays and just listen better than our own. Thank you, Father, for it fitting into your overall plan. Our lives are not an accident. They're on purpose because of what you want to do. Thank you for being a part of that. We worship you, God. You really are our Father who cares for us. I pray that people would just release their stress, their anxiety right now to you. That they would relax in this atmosphere, this environment of peace that comes from heaven, comes from within. The peace that you give, not like the world gives, that's temporary, but this lasting peace on the inside of us. Thank you, God. Holy Spirit, reveal to our spirit your words, your directions. Help us to recognize when you're speaking, when you're leading. And help us to honor that by acting on that.
worship you and honor you. We worship you and honor you, God. We worship you and honor you, God. Thank you that you're a living God. Speak your living words to us and bring us life. We honor you and worship you. We honor the presence of the Holy Spirit within us. Our great God within us, changing us and speaking to us and walking with us. We're your people. We're walking with you. in step with the Spirit of God. Thank you, God. Jesus is so good. Uh, very humbled and uh, blown away just how much he loves us he blesses us and uh, my little guy here last weekend just got saved and uh it's just amazing how smart kids really are. They are smart. And this guy right here is pretty smart. And kind of, he just reminded me just how good God is for us. So we do, I don't, I don't have a lot of material things. I don't have a big house, a fancy car, or all of that stuff. And I don't have. You a, got a good truck. It's a pretty nice truck. It's a pretty nice truck. I don't have a. Uh, I don't. I don't like to use that word uh, perfect. But I know I have a perfect love. And I search and search and search this world in many different forms, and I never found it. And uh, I just one night on my knees that inner man, you know, giving my heart to Jesus. I was baptized when I was 14, but that, you know, life. And that night, I just, I was, see, I want to know Jesus. I would really want to know him. Not hear of him. Oh, I believe him. I want to know Jesus. I want to, I want to experience this life, this peace, this freedom. And guys, I, I in a one bedroom apartment, I got on my knees and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I, things coming out of me that I, I didn't know was in there. And it was just me and him. And he met me right there. And I never forget it. And every time I look at my family, I'm always reminded of it because he's blessed me. So I, I got up and I went to the bathroom washed my face with water. I was crying, tears. And I looked in the mirror and I saw a new man. And before that, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see myself. I always didn't like what I saw. But at that moment, I knew God loved me. And he changed my life. He changed my life. In the beginning, he says, we are created in his image. And I think it's more of as his image. All the greatness, goodness, kindness, loving. He put it right there. And we all have it in us. But we're trying to bring it out and heighten it ourselves. But that's what the journey is. Following Jesus. Loving one true God. 
and accepting the Holy Spirit to bring out who you are. So I say that to say this. If you're <laughs> afraid, it's okay. It's okay to have a little fear. If you're, if you're looking down on yourself and this world is just torn you apart, if you're discrediting yourself, I want to pray for you. And I want to let you know that God's going to meet you right where you are. You don't have to wait. You don't have to stop. You don't have to clean up anything. You don't have anything. He's going to meet you right where you are. And if you're feeling that, even if for a little bit, please, 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 trust me. Give him your chance. He's everything. He's everything. So, closing out, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for Dave and Diane. We thank you for everything. We thank you for your son. We thank you for creation. And Lord, we just, I thank you for my, my family, for who I am. Thank you for my friends. And Lord, we, I know, I know through this chaos, you're going to bring us through everything, anything. So, Lord, we just depend on you. We love you. We just lift you up. 